we had started a sermon series on how to make your star shine. The godly way. Praise God. Because there's people out there who, in the world who also have a version of any, an idea of sort of how to make their star shine. This is not news. It's ancient wisdom, like I shared. Many people know about it. It's not new. But it's just that many Christians are indifferent about this. And I remember starting from the first day to explain to you like Jesus was born and there was a star in the sky and the wise men followed him like God promised through Abraham that his descendants shall be as the stars in the sky. Like, like um, Joseph was dreaming one time, he saw the sun, the moon, and stars bowing to him. And the scriptures tell us that these stars represented children, right? So it is with all of us that we are children of the Most High and we are stars. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible calls God the God of lights. Right? You are a light. Tell your neighbor I'm a light. You all read the scripture that says so you are the light of the world, isn't it? So there is something about you. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses 5. If you're there, you say, Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5, the Bible tells us something, um, or, or rather, the, the third thing, I think there should be four or five things I might share, depending on how God leads. The first one was, hey, the first one was, the second one was, praise God. Hallelujah. Those of you who want to write already, if you can get your pen, if you want to give it a title, just, say, just write the inward light. The light within, okay? The light within, or the inward light, whichever is easier for you, depending on the school you went to. The light within. Somebody say, the light within. Say again, the light within. Now, the Bible says in verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. And the Bible says, For God... Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness? The God who commanded light to sh- who commanded who the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness? The Bible says has shined in our hearts to gi- he has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Somebody say to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now the Bible says. If I can read it from the Amplified. He says for God. Verse 6. Who said let light shine out of darkness. Has shown in our hearts as to beam forth. The light for the illumination of the knowledge of the majesty and glory of God. As it is manifest in the person and revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. However the Bible says. We possess this precious treasure. This which which treasure? The light, right? He says, however, we possess this precious treasure, this divine light of the gospel, in frail human vessels of the earth, uh, that the grandeur and exceeding greatness, that the grandeur and exceeding greatness of power may be shown from God and not from ourselves. In other words, the only reason why you have a body Is that the exceeding greatness of power may be shown to be of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's the only reason why you have a body. That when glory is manifested, they'll say, uh-uh, you know what? We have to admit it. This is God. A human being can't do this. It's the only reason why you have a body. It's an unearthen vessel. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, I've come to talk about the light within. Because yes, we're talking about service, servitude, right? We talked about wisdom, which is uh, beautiful. But many people do not understand the light within. Of course, as I continue to share, you're going to realize that I'm going to use certain scriptures I think some of you know, some even can repeat of head. But you quite can, may not have understood them the way they're going to be shared tonight. To the glory of God. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, let's open our Bibles to First Peter. Many of you know, and I've read, that you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Give me the amplified of that. He says, you are a chosen race, 
a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. He says God's own purchased special people. Somebody say I'm special. And the Bible says that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues. Now listen, you may display the virtues, number one, the perfections of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You understand? That's why you're created. That's why it's a general scripture. Everybody knows that. Well, I believe many of you who have been under this ministry for some time or listen to this message know that. Praise God. But it's important for me to begin from there at least to help some who either do not know these things and we don't want to assume obviously, but also to give us a certain grain of foundation in the thing that I want us to define. Praise the Lord Jesus. There is nothing as powerful in this world Nothing as powerful in this world as the thing God has placed inside a believer. Praise God. Praise the Lord. There is nothing in this world. And I'm going to say that because I assume you know that. But as I continue to explain again, you're going to understand that many of us had a very little knowledge and consequence of this thing. You know, it's one thing. To know something in your mind. And it's another for that thing to, to sink in your spirit. For it to be a revelation in your spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people say, oh, I'm more than a conqueror. But then they're not, they're not conquering. Yeah? yeah, I am healed. But then they're not what? Healed. Oh, no, no, no. Some, it's only a matter of, of time and process. The manifestation comes through. But some conception will never come. And they'll stay, some stay no more. Even with the knowledge that we keep on preaching every other day. And that's the beauty with the Bible. That's how I know that, that you can't run out. Because it's relevant in every situation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because we continue to cast light on your souls. To give understanding to your mind. And revelation to your spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I read for you earlier on. That you have this treasure. The God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in your hearts. He gives the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So what's the essence of the latent regenerated spirit of God? To, to, to show forth the glory of God. If men want to know what is glory, they have, just have to look at you. Praise God. And I've read for you in Peter, he says that you are a royal a chosen, a chosen race. He says a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. You're dedicated. God, you were dedicated unto God. God's own purchased special people. He says that you, that, that, again, to the intent that you may, you may, the Bible says that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Let me talk about displaying perfections. How does a man speak of display perfection in an imperfect body? You get my point? Of course, our character is one of them, and that's wonderful. The Bible says that you've been purchased, you've been bought, so honor God in your body, right? Our character, the way we respond to things, all of that defines the glory of God. But I want to take this thing a bit, a bit, a bit higher. That, 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 than usual definitions of, of perfection. Now, to men, the way men define for perfection is not the way God defines perfection. And you would be amazed that many Christians define perfection like men define perfection. Not the way God defines perfection. You understand what I'm saying? Perfection of men is anything that looks pleasantly upright and true. Even people who don't know God can say, that is perfect. That's a perfect answer. In the world, there is something men define as perfection. But according to God, God's definition of perfection, it's not the way men define or understand perfection. Because when men define perfection, they have a relative understanding of what is truth. Even though truth is supposed to be absolute. That is why we have different views about God, about life. That's why people don't believe in God. But they have a definition of perfection. People don't believe in this gospel. But they have a definition of perfection. And this is the true definition of perfection in God. 
The true definition of perfection in God is when a man learns to fully understand and reconcile his person with his manifested purpose. The person of God with his manifested purpose. God is a God of purpose. You understand? He's not just a God who wakes up to live and exist without purpose. Our God is a God of purpose. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fulfillment of manifestation in his purpose. According to his nature, his person is what we define as perfection. Who has understood what I mean? Okay, let me go a bit deeper. The mind of God, okay, the way the mind of God works. Or rather, if a man should say, I, am, I, am, I want to understand the mind of God pertaining anything or pertaining life, okay? No man can access the mind of God by simply um, taking time to study the mind of God as one who is separated from the same mind. Am I making sense? Some people, for example, there is a, there, there, this, is, this is, right? This, this, is, this is where I'm standing, right? Let's just say this is God, eh? and they're here. They, they separate themselves from this mind and want to know this mind. You understand what I'm saying? You will never know God by separating yourself from Him. The beginning of the knowledge of the person of God comes with the true understanding of your oneness with Him in the Spirit. In fact, the world cannot know God until they reconcile this oneness. That you in me and I in them, that the world will know that we are one. Praise the Lord. That the world may know that thou hast sent me. The world coming to the knowledge of God begins when the Christian is reconciled together with God. And he's one with God. Without oneness with God, the world can't know God. Who has understood what I just said? Without your oneness with God, the world cannot understand God. This is big. This is big. He he says this, I in them, right? I in them, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. You see the way the beginning of perfection? The, the, The perfection begins when I and Christ, Christ and I, Christ and God, we Christ and God are one. Can you for a moment think that you, God, and Christ are one? Oh, no, 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 no. God is up there for us, we are here. For us, we are only normal human beings. No, no, no. I'm talking to the treasure right now in Athen vessel. I'm not talking to the vessel. If you, see, if, you, if you are in the vessel realm, you will not understand me. You understand? I'm talking to the treasure in the vessel. That treasure is 100% with God. That's the beginning of oneness. And without the revelation of oneness, we can't even define truth and perfection, or even the person of God. Who has understood what I just said? So we seek the reconciliation of making men understand that even though you're walking this normal life as a normal human being, you are not alone. You are not of your own. You, 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 you don't walk alone. You don't go to church alone. You don't sit in your car alone. You don't eat alone. You don't breathe alone. You don't go to work alone. You don't, just, you don't go into this thing alone. You, you're not in whatever situation you're in. You might be there. You, you, you understand? He even says we are hard pressed, but we are not destroyed. We are persecuted, but not about. We, all of these things happen. Uh, but, 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 you're not alone. Hallelujah. Some people say, oh, God, I'm going through something. Come and help me. Wow! How can you call who is with you? Hallelujah. Who is in you? Now, let me give you this reconciliation. Please don't lose me here. Access has principles, right? Right? You're given, but to access what is given is a principal thing, right? You get my point? We have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. But to access everything that pertains to life and godliness involves certain principles. You, you understand what I'm saying? You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in all places. You have been given. You are blessed. You are this. Yes, yes. All of this is, is true. But to access is another thing. Are you following me? 
Access has a principle. And the most distinct principle of access is the spirit of faith. Okay? Now, let's leave aside the faith to believe that the lame man will walk or the blind eye will see or the deaf will hear or the dead will rise. Oh, I'm believing God for a job and I get it. Before all of this comes through, of course, you can have miracles, signs, and wonders. You can have experiences of God in many ways, but still never come to this perfection. And, and I want to define a certain perfection with you. When the Bible says who has known the mind of Christ, or the mind of God that he should instruct him, right? And it says, but we have the mind of Christ. That statement is so powerful. That it takes the highest level of faith for a man to fully apprehend it. You get my point? That's why the Bible speaks of how we have access. We have obtained access by faith into this grace by which we stand. You understand? Because faith is it's, it's the ultimate, it's the ultimate ingredient for access. It says, by whom we also have access by faith. We have access by faith. Access, access is by faith. You, you don't pray that the mind of God be revealed in your life. You believe that you carry the mind of God pertaining to your thing. When you believe that you, you have the mind of God pertaining a thing, or that you have the mind of God pertaining instruction, oracle, whichever thing you have, the spirit of faith that is at work within you causes you to access what is already given. It is given to you to have the mind of God, but not everybody walks into what is given. How many of you understand that? But for you to carry access and walk into what is already given, a man has to access it by faith. That is why many people don't see in the spirit. Because they are asking to see what they don't have the faith to see. I'm not saying what they cannot see. You understand what I'm saying? When it comes to the spirit of prophecy, it is not what you are not, what you are not able to see. As in, 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 in respect of it being so far from you. You understand what I'm saying? When it comes to the spirit of faith, it is, not, it is on what you're not able to see because you don't have the faith to see. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, let me explain it another way. When the Bible says that he has made known unto us the mystery of his will, the mystery of his will, how many of you believe that he has made known unto you the mystery of his will? Now, don't think that the word mystery there used is semantics and English language, just grammar. No. There's a difference between him showing you his will and the mystery of his will. You get my point? There's a difference between him simply telling you this is my will for your life and, and, and him explaining to you the mystery of his will. The secret of his will. Who has understood what I just said? God can make you know his will. I want to do this. Making you know the mystery. Making to you know the mystery of his will. Means he goes to give you the explanation of why he wills a certain way. And that reality is not a present continuous experience as you relate with God. It is a past tense experience of a man who has entered this realm of understanding. This is a place that every man has to go. You understand what I'm saying? The spirit world is so open for a man who carries the word. That is why it says very clearly that the, the word of God is a double-edged sword. It cuts asunder, separates the bone and marrow, exposes our hearts. It, 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 it separates the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. There, I'm not now in the realm of prophet. I'm in the realm of the word. 
And the next verse says, and, and, and nothing, and not a creature, exists that is concealed or hidden from his sight. But all things, all things are open and exposed. They are naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The word. Now, it's one thing for some to be naked, but with defense. With defense means that you can behold its nature, but carry not the grace to, to change its form. Defenseless means that you carry both the grace to behold its nature and change its form. It's defenseless. That is why we heal the sick. That's why you can see a swelling in somebody's stomach. And it is there. And you say, you woman, there's something in your stomach. And she says, apostle, it is there. And then you enter that thing. And then you change it because it's defenseless. And it is naked. It is visible before you. You tell it in the name of Jesus. Get out! And it gets out. But, here I'm not talking about the gift. I'm talking about the operation of faith. I'm not talking about the gift to see in the spirit. I'm talking about the operation of faith. Who has understood what I just said? How many of you know that you can see by faith? Now, you, are, you understand that faith has eyes, right? You can see by faith. The more you read the word, you realize that nothing is hid. Nothing is hid with the word. Nothing is nothing. 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 Through this word, you know your next job. Apostle, I'm torn between two decisions. And you have the mind. You have the mind. And you're torn between decisions when you have the mind. Is that even possible? That you will do not know what what mind you have all? So how do I reconcile these two? I reconcile these two by simply believing the word that I actually have the mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how we demonstrate power. We don't demonstrate power hoping that God will move. No. That is not faith. You get it? Faith is not hope. Faith is the substance of hope. It's the creative material of hope. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't, I don't just believe God and say, oh, if I do this, oh, if I do that. No, 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 no. It, it has no bearing with, with what I am simply anticipating of above. Above all, in fact, it has every bearing with the way I've conditioned my spirit to, to walk in whatever I believe God to do. I don't know whether somebody is understanding what I'm saying. If you understand, you put up your hands. If you don't, I'll continue explaining. If you don't understand, also put up and I know. Okay, let me explain. Praise God. Let's just say, my physical self, my mind wants to know by revelation an issue that is spiritual. I'm not supposed to approach, approach that issue as one who wants to know because I am not the part that seeks to know. My physical self is the part that seeks to know. My physical mind is the part that seeks to know. My spirit does not seek to know. My spirit knows. Did you understand that? He says, you have an unction from on high. He says, you know all things. Are you following me? So there, there's a part of you that knows. And there's a part of you that does not know. The part of you that does not know is your human self. That is why, for example, in the book, he says, renew your mind by the reading of your word. Renew, renew, that you, the physical self, will know the good, acceptable, and perfect will concerning your life. This is your physical self. Your spiritual self has the mystery of his will. He has an unction from on high and he knows all things. 
Separate the man who knows and the man who doesn't know. Separate the man who is gnosko, progressive knowledge, and epignosis, advanced knowledge. The spirit man has advanced knowledge. The physical man has progressive knowledge. As I progressively know, I am adopting and mutating into the physical, the spiritual. Who has understood what I'm saying? You will understand. There is a man in you who knows everything. And there is a man in you who doesn't know. And many people confuse these two men. You know, me I don't know. For us, you can never know everything. Who are you talking about? When you tell somebody, you, you, uh, uh, we can never know everything. Me I keep planning. You, you always add, always add, in the body. In our flesh. You understand what I'm saying? But you have a man in you who knows all things. <laughs> what your human self is believing God for, this man in the spirit has believed. What your believing body is, 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 is preparing for, this man in the spirit is already prepared for. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you're going to realize that the exchange of experience sometimes is not just what comes from above into us, but it is what the physical man seeks in apprehending of the spiritual. There's a transaction there. A very beautiful exchange. That's why Paul at one point says, I'm dead, yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, he, says, he knows that there's a dead man, there's a living man, there's a living man, there's a dead man. There's two. In, 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 in Romans 7, that which I will to do, I do not. And that I will not to do, I do. For in me, it seems like there's a man who wants to do, but outward carries not the power for. The spirit is willing and the flesh. He, he knows that there's a, that's, there's a continuous war between these two men. Between how this man of the flesh sees the world and how the man of the spirit sees the world. Now, do you understand what it means? If you saw, by in, if you saw to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. But if you saw of the spirit, you will of the spirit reap life everlasting or eternal. Do you understand what it means to to sow to the Spirit? To sow to the Spirit is to, to, to understand from here. From the, from the man who knows. And to understand from the man who knows, God's simple ingredient is the faith to believe that you know. I wish you understand what I'm saying. For example, let me give you an example. I'd plan to teach and teach all through the whole service. That's the physical man. You understand what I'm saying? That's the physical man. He had planned to teach all through service. But if I don't understand this clearly, I might confuse myself that I am led by the Spirit to preach in the service. You understand what I'm saying? The spiritual man in me, he's too fast for the physical man to judge his actions. Because the carnal mind cannot receive, neither discern the things of the spirit. The unregenerated part of me cannot discern the things of the spirit. You understand? Now, that's the beginning of liberty. The beginning of liberty is when my spirit... No, my physical man is submitted enough to the spiritual man to do whatever he wants, when he wants it, because occasion serves a man who is aligned to the true desire of God. Why? Because this man is born of an incorruptible seed. Follow me. You understand? He cannot imagine corruption. One of the events where we've seen demonstration of spirit, but that it ended up as a fleshly encounter. 
That is the place where the spiritual man is trying to do something, but the physical man carries not the renewed mind to reconcile wisdom and maturity with the workings of the man of the spirit. So I'm not saying that every demonstration of spirit is spiritual. It can begin from a carnal perspective because it's gifted. But usually, every demonstration of power is to the profit with all. That's what the Bible says. Whoa, we. Now, if I have a situation where what I'm demonstrating as a spirit man carries no bearing with the physical, it only means that the physical man needs to grow and mature into understanding that this man of the spirit can only demonstrate in the oneness of purpose. Not simply the desire to. Because in him, there cannot be a kind of desire to. Why? Because he's born of an incorruptible seed. The seed in him cannot yield enough corruption to demonstrate what is not aligned to purpose. So the place of faith here, the place of faith here for the man of the spirit is not simply to believe God to do. It is simply... To walk in already what is already ordained by God to do. This is what they call perfection. You understand what I'm saying? If I decided right now that I'm going to demonstrate power, I'll demonstrate it. You get it? If I decide that I'm not going to demonstrate power, I'm not going to demonstrate it. But it also depends on who has made the decision. Is it the man of the flesh or the man of the spirit? You get my point? When a man wakes up in the flesh and decides to do a spiritual act out of fanaticism and, uh, and all these kinds of things, if that man, and he, if he tries to do it, he will not do it. He will fail to do it. You get it? But if a man is of the spirit, every step of demonstration, every choice of demonstration, it's to the degree of how just, how much demonstration responds to him according to the, the moment he chooses it. Because it's, it's no longer from a fleshly perspective to choose to demonstrate power. It's from a spiritual understanding and leading. That is perfection. And where perfection is, is where true liberty is. And where true liberty is, is where phronesis is. That's where you determine the mode of action. You determine the mode of action. I don't need to lay a hand on you to release power. No. I can release it anyway. You get my point? But if I do it, and then a, a carnal mind is observing me, huh? you know like some spiritual people who are still growing in the things of God, they, they will want to imitate the result. But without interpretation of the mind of the spirit and the process by which it is done. You understand what I'm saying? Do you get where I'm coming from? If I should demonstrate power, it is to the intent that I will teach your spirit something. You get it? Okay, let me do it for some of you such that also you one day you do it. I'm releasing power in somebody's feet now. Feet. Now. And it's happening. Now, that is just, that's a teaching. You understand? It's, I'm not just saying, let me demonstrate power, such that everyone knows that I have power. No. I've released it. You understand what I'm saying? And if you ask them, they are feeling electricity under their feet. You get my point? Now, to them, it's, it's not just, an, just like a normal thing that has happened in their legs, and then they're just going to go back home and they say they risk. No, no. If they are mature, they have received an instruction in the spirit. You get my point? If they are mature, they have received an instruction in the spirit. If they are not mature, it can only end by the power going through their feet. Praise God. I do more. I release power in somebody's hands right now. Your, your hands are going to feel like they are electrocuted. Now! It's happening. Look at that. 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 You see them waving their hands? You think, I, I, no, 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 no. That is instruction. You understand what I'm saying? 
I have the freedom to do it. Because you die more this side and you go more to this side. That's what they call liberty of the spirit. That's how healing happens. When, because what I'm speaking has to be physical. No, it has to be visible to my spirit. Hey, you try it, okay. If, if it's not... If it's not physical, no, visible to your, to your spirit, how do I know that it was going to work? I have thousands of people watching me online and everyone. Imagine if it had not worked. Aposo. Fanero. This is the boldness we have in God. Hallelujah. This is the confidence that we have in Him. Hallelujah. That we know that He heareth us. He know that He heareth us. That's the confidence. That's the confidence. Praise God. And if I want to increase it, I can also what? If I want to reduce it, I can also what? Reduce it. You understand what I'm saying? You get to a point where... If I continue there, I will not preach. In John chapter 12, 25, he says that he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. The Greek word there for life is suke. That is the breath of life. The thing God breathed in Adam in the beginning. The thing that vitalizes human breath in whatever exists as living. That's called suke, right? You're breathing in and out that life, right? When, if you stop breathing, you die, right? That's physical. Now, God says, if you love that life, hmm, you lose it. But if you hate it, the word there for hating means disregard it. But God is not telling you to disregard something without the end result of regarding another. It's like people who celebrate the death of Christ but without understanding resurrection power. What is the essence of you speaking of the death of Christ but without understanding the resurrection power? What is the essence of you speaking about the blood of Christ but without understanding the life which is in the blood? The new creature doesn't understand blood. The old creature understands blood because Jesus died for that creature which was a sinner in the flesh. This man understands blood. This man doesn't understand blood because he's born of God. He has never known sin. That which is born of God does not commit sin. It cannot. Because his sperm permanently abides in him. The life of God. He says no one born, this one, begotten of God, deliberately knowing the habitual presence for God's nature abides in him. His principle of life. His principle. His principle of life. The divine sperm remains permanently within him and he cannot practice sinning because he is begotten of God. This man cannot relate with God on a blood level. He relates with God on a life level. But when a man is here, of course he will relate with God from a blood level. And it's beautiful. We love the blood. We sing the blood. I still sing the blood. I celebrate the blood. I thank God for the blood. But only as it leads into life eternal. If it cannot take me there, then it's not sufficient. It's not, it's not, what is it, if, if, what, what is it for if it is shed, but it cannot give me life? What is the essence of Christ's death if you cannot experience the resurrected power? Are, are you following what I'm saying? Now, of course, many people, when they tell him, lose your life, I mean, hate suke, many of them start to hate the way. Or, because many of them disregard suke, like God has taught us, many of them think that we're also supposed to disregard the life of God which is in us. Because many people don't know the difference between Zoe, the life of God, and Suke, the life of men. Because they read it in English. 
It's all in English called life. You understand what I'm saying? So there's two words in, in the same English language that mean life. One is suke, which is the life of man. And the other is zoe, which is the life of God himself. Hallelujah. It's the life of God himself. Himself. <laughs> I wish you see what I'm seeing. Is somebody understand what I'm saying? It's the life of God himself. Now, that, if you understand that, let's go back to John. John says, in him was life. Who? Christ, the way, the life of God. And the life was the light of men. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What is represented as light of men is the life of the Spirit. Who has understood what I just said? It is the life of the Spirit, of the regenerated Spirit in Christ. Which light is in you as a treasure of earthen vessels? So if I say you have this treasure in earthen vessels, the light, for God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. To give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. There could not have been a shining of light without the manifestation of light. The life preceded the light. You understand what I'm saying? And that life is within you. It is the life that lights. Yeah, are you getting it now? It is the life of the spirit that lights. Oh. You, uh, we're still talking about, okay, let me use your, 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 what, what you'll understand. It is the light that shines. It's the light that shines, but it is the life that shines as the light. It is the life of the Spirit that makes this star shine. Have I made sense? Every experience you have of the life of God can only break this man further to respond to the man of the spirit, which is complete. Now, let's go back a bit to the place of faith. There's somebody here who is saying, now I'm talking about this star. Somebody here says, I want a car. You understand? I'm believing God for. This is the prayer of a man in the flesh. Then we go to the spirit. And the Spirit says, all things are yours. Whether Apollos or Paul, whether things present or things to come, he says, whether Kephas or the world, all life, all death, all things present, all things to come, all are yours. Somebody came yesterday and they were crying. Don't worry, I'll not, I'll not mention their name. I called them, asked them, why are you crying? Say they stole my phone. Don't laugh. They didn't cry because they, they didn't believe they were going to get back. But they were angry at the person having taken their phone. But you see, my, I, I went back to how I was years ago. I was also exactly like that years ago. You understand what I'm saying? I, if somebody takes your phone, for example, hmm? what are you going to miss in your phone? Text messages, right? Phone numbers, right? WhatsApp videos and pictures. Very important documents. You understand? Now, can you open your eyes for a moment to understand that those WhatsApp messages are still yours? Those videos they've stolen for you, they're still yours. The problem with many Christians is, for them, they can only become theirs if they find a way to retrieve. Say, so, uh, you lost everything? Yeah, I lost everything. Oh, 
oh yeah, that's another person. Did you lose everything? No, 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 no. I'd saved some in the cloud. So I retrieved some of my data. Whether you have retrieved or not retrieved, whether you served in the cloud or did not serve in the cloud, all things are yours. The only problem with the man of the flesh, he wants me to explain to him that these things will come back to you a certain way. Or what you don't need won't come back, but what we'll need will still find you. He wants me to explain to him. He wants me to demystify the mystery. You didn't lose a job. No, they fired you. Yes. That's understanding in human sense. You understand what I'm saying? But this man still has a choice. Because even the job is defenseless. Even the thief who has stolen your phone is defenseless. Even the phone they've stolen. Now when they say the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. The wealth, for example, of the wicked it's stored out from the just. Let me explain. Many of you have read that scripture, right? But I bet some of you have not read it in the Amplified. The Amplified says, the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually. Do you know what it means? Hmm? Let me explain it. Somebody steals your money. They have sinned, right? That's the wealth of a sinner. They go with it to massacre. Right? Then they give that money into a, a shop to buy something. Right? And that money sits in a shopkeeper's desk. It is there, but it is for it, its brain. Eh? It's trying to remember the way. Who has understood what I'm saying? It's trying to remember the way back to Kampala. Then you board a plane and go to the US. And then it starts to download the GPS. Then it says, if I have to change in two dollars to locate my original owner. The Bible says, it finds its way. Eventually, into the hands of the righteous. Now, there are people who are working. There are people who are working. They are facing black boxes. They have funny gods in their houses. They are doing like this. But, but the money is like, it's looking like this to see. Whether they are seeing it or not. So some people, their money is doing like this. Then I ask, where are you going? He says, nowhere. Then it comes back. Then the man goes to sleep. <sighs> then, then. then it opens the door of the rich man. be poor. All things are mine. All things are mine. All things are mine. That's why I shine. Because they are all attracted to me. Surely goodness and mercy shall. What do they do? They follow you. And all things are yours. Money follows you. You're a magnet. Success follows you. You're a magnet. Wisdom follows you. You're a magnet. Glory follows you. You're a magnet. Anointing follows you. You're a magnet. Peace follows you. You're a magnet. Happiness follows you. You're a magnet. Joy follows you. You're a magnet. Why? Because all these things want to attach themselves to the life. 
Creation groans. Creation is groaning for the manifestation of the heels of God. The mature, the ones who have understood. Even these trees, when they look, they are, they are saying, Apostle, preach. They might not be moving, but they are excited. The book of Psalms, 139. The Bible says, 139. He says, Let's begin from verse 14. 139, verse 14. He says, I will praise thee. Now, listen. For I am, you know that, fearfully and wonderfully made. But many people didn't know the next line. The next line says, marvelous are thy works. Now, you are a work of God. Right? You are a work of God. And it says, marvelous are his works. That means you are a marvel. That means when people look at you, they're like, Say I'm a marvel. Oh! Listen, I'm a marvel. I marvel people. I marvel things. Now, let me explain what that means. It means... When you're walking on Ginger Road and the GLC Mercedes Benz is looking at you, it's the one with, which does like this. <laughs> if you ever stop on a road and like a nice car, I want you to lambano this this way. Don't go back and say, I saw a nice car. Go back and say, I met a car and we looked at each other. <laughs> I looked at a nice house. And then I looked at it and I said, wow. Even the house was like, whoa. Sometimes I drive and I look at very nice buildings. And I see them doing like, ah, puzzle. Come on, come on. Get this thing in your spirit. Come on. <laughs> the 17th verse says, How precious also are thy thoughts. Now I want to show you, God, God thinks about you, right? But even the thoughts are precious. They are, they are, they are of treasure, right? And the Bible says, how great is the sum of them. And the Bible says, for if they should be counted, they're more in number than the sand. Now, let me explain. Get sand. And get one grain of sand. And understand for a moment, that was one thought about you. Put it on the side. Get another. Your marriage. Your finances. Your children. Your shoe. Your right primola. Your mattress. Your socks, your pen, your bathroom, your soap, even the money that you lost, you lost, you left somewhere on Kampala Road, your flash, your old watch. <laughs> and there's still more to think about you. Why do you even worry? Do you see how you have to shine? Because he maintains your lot. Maintains your lot means he gets to every single of yours and makes sure 
It is in the perfect order. But how come nothing is in my perfect order? You have not yet understood it. Access. Faith. It, it's not going to work because you've seen it. It's going to work because you've believed it. From today, start to believe that everything that pertains to you, that is, he shall perfect that which concerns me. You cannot be like that and worry about your spouse. No, no, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. She'll be fine. Oh, sorry, we had your family. No, 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 no. God is maintaining. He's perfecting. Oh, we hear your son is on drugs. Darling, my son is fine. Why? That thought was recorded. And there are many more thoughts. So, some of you, if I write down your prayer request, it's countable. Yet God's thoughts toward you. Get out of that zone for a moment. And enter this zone and tell God, what are we supposed to be doing? Every morning when you wake up, you tell him, Holy Ghost, what are we doing today? Isaiah 43 verses 1, it says, but now, I love the Amplified. The Amplified adds, in spite of judgment, in spite, in spite the fact that God had judged Israel in the past. Thus saith the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Now, he, in spite of past judgment, in spite of what you have done. You know, I, I, I want to help some of you. Some of you, 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 you have dropped your value to the level of how people see you. You, you weigh your value in the eyes of what people think about you. Okay, you messed up two years ago, or four, or five, or six, or ten years ago. You understand? Now, from that day, every opinion spoken about you, you look at it from the eyes of those who don't value you. You get my point, eh? God gets Israel in spite of their foolishness, in spite of past judgment, judgment. He still tells you, I have created you, I formed you, fear not, I have redeemed you, I have ransomed you, I have paid a price instead of having you for captives. I have called you by name, you are mine. What am I trying to say? Not even your worst sin in scripture has changed your value. Not even your worst sin in history has changed your value. I tell people, you know, people get into a silly deception, and this is a deception, that either your value reduces when you've done bad, or it increases when you've done good. That is dishonoring the blood and the price Christ paid. But some people, it is easier because when they see good works, they tend to think that that is the qualification. Nobody can ever be good enough to earn God's grace. Nobody. You understand what I'm saying? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to help some of you who maybe have messed up in the past so badly. You even wrote yourself up and said, Ah, me, God. Yeah, me, you'll just kill me because... Just waiting to die. What I've done in this world. Apostle even. You understand? <laughs> Listen, I don't care how worse or how bad or how ugly. Your value before God has not changed. Because it was never based on your performance, neither your failure. It was based on who you believed and who ransomed you. He's the one who drew that price. He paid the price. You're not expensive because of what you've done. And you're not expensive because of what you're not going to do. It's not about what you've done. No. It's about he who has ransomed you. He bought you. He is the one who says, I don't care how wicked they say you are. Me, this is your value for me. Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? He looked at Jesus and looked at the light within you that should come. And he says, no, 
There is nothing that can redeem this kind. Myself in the flesh for this man. Your value hasn't changed. Praise God. Let's finish maybe because of time. Verses 3. He says, For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, and he says, your Savior, he says, I give Egypt to the Babylonians for your ransom. I give, I give, and Seba as a province of Ethiopia in exchange of your release. That means, God, even if you got a whole nation eh, full of people who don't know God, eh, and then you're here, and then they ask God, Apostle Grace, and the whole nation of 100 million people who don't know you. God will say, ah, 100 million. Apostle. <laughs> Somebody scream and say, hallelujah. God would give up nations for you. He would give up men for you. There are even people who will die for you. I also don't know why, but that's so. Praise the Lord Jesus. Stop looking at the things without. Look at the light within. Look at the life within. Access this by faith. Like a proclamation is made and God affirms and conf- sorry, confirms the affirmed experience of what is in his mind. So it is supposed to be the life of every believer. You're supposed to live a present continuous life of glory to glory to glory to glory. You know, there are some preachers who say, you know, sometimes things can come and then, listen. Okay, you preach those lines. We have better lines. Praise the Lord. We are persuaded of better things that accompany salvation. When God wanted to make a man a helper, where did he look? You understand? Every problem and circumstance and challenge that you have is only because you look without. Think about it. You think what your challenge is and then think about this statement. You realize it's a problem without. It's not something within. Look within. This star shines when you understand your identity in God. It shines when you know what God had to give up for you. It shines when you understand how the world works. How can you worry that you're going to be poor after explaining to you how much money is looking for you? How? If your car knocks, you'll get another one. If your house falls, you'll rebuild another one. All things are yours. Open your mind and your spirit to get this. Hallelujah. You know why I'm, I preach this? It's because I've seen men who have gone for interviews and the moment they go for that interview, they feel they don't qualify. I've seen men who have entered marriages and they feel they don't qualify. I've seen people who have gone into contracts and they say, ah, this is too big for me. I don't have this level of education. That's why you're there. <laughs> To the glory of God. That men will know glory. Did he say? Didn't he say that this light is shining out of you? To give the knowledge of the glory of God? Did he not say why you are peculiar and special people? That you should proclaim forth the praises of him that called you out of his darkness into his marvelous light? That's why it's yours. That men will understand that the books of this world have an end, but God doesn't. That men will understand that, 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 that the systems of this world have an end, but you are not limited by them. Oh, whoa! I don't look at myself and think. One time, my last job, somebody asked me. In the last interview, when I was working with a certain bank, the man asked me, how much can we pay you? <laughs> I laughed. I told him there is no amount of money you can pay me that can equal to what I'm going to give your organization. It's not there. (laughs) Just give me as you feel. (laughs) If you're not giving me this money, I'm not going for that job. Because you don't have purpose. 
We didn't go working because we, we were just desperate men looking for jobs. We had purpose. We went to save souls and save our parts too. So that our children will know, oh, my daddy was once a banker. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I was watching some preachers on television and they were, they were discussing a topic honorarium. Who knows honorarium? The money they give preachers or the amounts of money they give people who preach because they've preached. So some guy was saying that for him he doesn't go certain places because they don't, they don't give him enough money to honor the ministry in his life. As he was a preacher. You don't give me this much. You don't give me these thousands of dollars. I'm not coming. Praise God. Roberta is my witness. If I go in a nation and they buy me an economic class, I'll upgrade where I belong. Because there is no amount of money. They can never pay Apostle Grace. It's not there. I don't reap what, where I sow. I reap what... I saw. You get my point? Whether they get me a hotel or they don't, that's their problem. Whether they send a limousine to pick me up or they send a guy on a bike, I'll sit on it if I have purpose. Because for me, whether I go by a bike or a motorcycle or a limousine, if God has sent me a place, he has sent me. One time I was going to preach and this man told me, so how much can we give you? I told him, sir, you can't pay me. Usually, how much do you preach for? No, no, you don't get it. You can't pay me. After preaching, the man said, you have preached way deeper than men who ask for tens of thousands to preach even before they start preaching. And I told them, Fanero. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'm free. I am free. Praise God. I am free. I know who holds me. Whether they pay your fees, if they don't pay, look up. If they, don't, if they pay your, your, your rent, wonderful. If they don't pay your rent, look up. Oh, they have my money, let them pay you. If they don't pay you, look up. Somebody told me, oh, I'm stuck in my business. All my, my money is held up in loans. I said, you're sick. How can you be limited because people have your money? Come on. There's an endless flow here. Go for more while you wait for them to pay. Okay, get to your feet and we'll pray. <laughs> I want you to speak in other tongues. If you don't have them, speak in your English. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. All for you. I'm prophesying on your life. All for you. All for you. Things are turning around for you. Somebody say, All for me. All for me. Turning around for me. <laughs> all for me. All is three letters, but it's everything. Sing it from your spirit. Things are turning around for me. Somebody say, All for me. All things are turning. My finances are turning. My faith is turning. My my health is standing. My ministry is standing. My things are turning around. Somebody sing all for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around. Somebody sing all for me. Sing on for me. Something is happening in the spirit. Things are turning around. 
Something is happening as you're singing that song. It's happening. Things are turning around. Things are turning around. Listen, as you're singing this song, I want you to see it. See it. See it. See it with your eyes. Whatever you're singing, see it. Things are turning around. Oh. you are like the sand on the seashore. Some of you have been released in that liberty. And I might not have words to explain it, but I have the anointing to explain it. God start to touch every man and woman that is to walk in this glory. God is simply going to show you that your needs were so few compared to the plans that he has towards your life. Come on, go! 